control of biodegradation the one and very important and you all are aware with the term is a sterilization we can sterilize a uh, different kind of uh, uh, instruments especially the surgical instruments or microbiological media making it free from all different kinds of microorganism hence these instruments or media will not get deteriorated another way is that many more times we understand that the quality of food is also affected by the growth of spoilage microorganism that quality of food or deterioration of food can also be controlled by the process of canning we can control the uh, quality of milk by the process of pasteurization and even to add more filtration is one of the physical processes which can be used to control the bio deterioration of different kinds of pharmaceutical compounds now the next is that apart from these methods there are certain other methods like we can make the use of low temperature and reduction in the water activity low temperature is normally used for the storage of food and especially the temperature below 5 degree centigrade is used whenever we want to keep the food in a good quality we want to preserve the food or we want to prevent the bio deterioration of the food the second is how can we reduce the water activity there are different kinds of grain wood leather and uh, fibers like cotton jute they are always kept in a dry condition you must be knowing this in a day to day life that these things are always kept in a very dry condition even if there is some humidity this material can absorb this humidity as a result of that once they absorb the humidity the water content is there which will permit the growth of different kinds of microorganism and hence the grains and woods leather and fiber they gets deteriorated normally one more example we can cite is that wood wood has also tendency to absorb the water so whenever the wood is present in humid condition it will absorb the water and it will get deteriorated i had already talked about the perishable food and pharmaceutical products now like naturally when we talk about the control and we understand that the control is basically achieved by removing the microorganism for which we have seen the various methods but sometimes it is very much possible that we may not be able to remove the microorganism or we may not be able to control the environmental conditions then what can be do in such situations in this kind of situation materials are to be modified by processing or we should add some chemical compound so that the microorganism do not utilize those material as a food source so in this situation we always make the use of additives like lactic acid formic acid sorbic acid uh, benzoic acid propanoic acid to retard the microbial growth and this is very much true in the preservation of the food another way is that we employ some fermentation processes like lactic acid fermentations to produce some milk products which are because of lactic acid production the milk products gets free from microorganism not only the milk products but we can also use such lactic acid fermentations in the uh, production of pickles sauerkraut and silage now the next example is again is about the wood wood which is buried in the soil that part of the wood that remains inside the soil as for example the telephone poles fence posts or pilings they are commonly impregnated with some antimicrobial chemicals like coal tar or cresot apart from this there can be we can make the use of biocides some chemical compounds like biocides can be used these chemical compounds can be chlorophenols dithiocarbamates acrolein and dibromonitropropionates are normally used for canvas of tents camping gear and other field equipments tar we had already given the example that the coal tar is basically used for the wood and it can also be used for some sail clothes phenyl mercury um, phenyl mercuric biocides are used in the pulp industry because they can retard or reduce the growth of slime forming microorganism 
Similarly, the chemicals like tannic acid and chromic acids can also be used in the leather industry for reducing the growth of microorganisms. Now, coming to the actual process of biodeterioration of different kinds of material, the first one we will discuss about the biodeterioration of paper. Before we see the biodeterioration of paper, we should see how the paper, what is the chemical composition of paper and how the paper is produced. Normally the paper is produced from the wood and wood basically consists of a very large fraction of cellulose, some lignin and some hydrocarbon and cellulose. So naturally when paper is produced from the wood, its composition will also remain the same. Now this is the picture which can give you an idea that what happens when the paper gets deteriorated. Paper can be deteriorated by some fungi, by some microorganism like bacteria. And once the paper is deteriorated, the effect is seen in terms of some stains. You can see some patches. The stains may be brown. In the, as you can see in the pictures, it can be brown in color, it can be gray or it can be black in color. So this gives a very dirty appearance to the paper. Now, Next is naturally when we have seen that the paper gets deteriorated, how can we control this kind of deterioration? So the, in paper production there is a use of water. In this water we can use chlorine. So chlorinated, use of chlorinated water will prevent the growth of many slum forming uh, organism and fungi. Apart from this the chemical compounds like phenolic and organosulfite which are antifungal in nature can also be used to prevent the growth of fungi. Initially the mercuric salts, salts were used very widely but now it has been banned by several countries. Next material we are talking about the biodeterioration of the wood. About the wood composition of wood I had already told you that its main components are cellulose, lignin and hemicellulose. Chemically, we have seen that many bacteria, fungi can attack these cellulose. Why? Reason is that these fungi have a very typical enzyme like cellulase. So they attack on cellulose with the production of some sugars. Now these sugars can be utilized by the microorganism for their so as a source of energy. But the point that arises over here again, that in what form the deterioration of wood occurs. So the deterioration of wood will occur in the form of rot. Rot can be a white rot, it can be a brown rot, it can be a wet or soft rot. Now why do we see this white rot? If cellulose and lignin both are attacked by the microorganism or by the higher forms of organism, then the wood turns out to be white in color and hence we call this as a white rot. Similarly, when more amount of cellulose is attacked and less quantity of lignin is utilized, then it results in the brown color of the wood. So we call that as a brown rot. Similarly, there are different kinds of decay which we can use the terms like wet rot, soft rot and staining. A very good picture showing the piling of the logs of wood and in the center of this log you can very well see the decaying of the wood. Normally we understand that the, all the woods need to be wet or having some humidity before it can rot. So for rottening of the wood, it essential point is that wood should be wet. But decayed wood sometimes can give you a very dry look. This can be seen from the picture very clearly. So how to control the wood biodeterioration by coating the surfaces of the wood with the paint or lacquer we can always protect the wood from deterioration and this is a very common example then in our houses we always paint the doors and windows and other things with the help of paint paints are very good source to control the microorganism because they form a surface where the water cannot reach and also they prevent the entry of microorganism to the surface of the wood hence the deterioration of the wood will be prevented by using the paints similarly we can use some antimicrobial agents like uh, in uh, railway tracks whatever the slippers are being used which are made up of wood 
telephonic poles which are again made up of woods they can be impregnated with some antimicrobial agents which are normally the phenolic compounds and they will prevent the biodegradation of the wood next material we are talking about is biodegradation of textile again all different kinds of textile fibers are liable to get deteriorated and normally the textile can be the natural or they can be synthetic one but the natural fibers of textile are more prone to deterioration than the synthetic one the reason you will get it when i discuss more about this in natural fiber when they say they are having the cellulose which can be attacked by different kinds of cellulitic fungi and bacteria now the mi microorganism may be fungi or bacteria they convert the cellulose to soluble sugar which is again metabolized by the microorganism as the food proteinaceous fiber are present in wool and silk and they are less susceptible to attack by the microorganism but but of course some microorganism who has the proteolytic enzymes they can attack this kind of silk and wool fibers fibers which are made from the synthetic polymers like nylon polyester polythene polyacrylic uh, these are the fiber which are found to be highly resistant to attack by microorganism so in short i can definitely say that the natural fibers are more susceptible to attack by microorganism as compared to this synthetic fiber what is the reason for that reason is very simple because synthetic fibers are hydrophobic in nature so they will not at attract the water and as a result there will not be any growth of microorganism the second reason for is that in case of synthetic fiber some chemical bonds are formed these chemical bonds are not naturally seen in the natural fibers so it is very much possible that microorganism may not have the proper enzyme to work on these kind of chemical bonds hence the synthetic fibers are more resistant to biodegradation as compared to natural fibers if we talk about the organism what type of our organism can bring about the biodegradation of textile it includes the different uh, fungi lygio trichon penicillium then uh, trichoderma aspergillus these are the various types of fungi which can cause the biodegradation of textile if we talk about the bacteria then the very commonly seen are bacillus cereus bacillus subtilis enterobacter klebsiella micrococcus and pseudomonas again there is a problem when the microbial growth occurs on the textile what changes we will see in the textile and because as you know from the definition of biodegradation that whenever the biodegradation occurs it causes the changes physical or chemical changes in the material plus this is a great economic loss so let us find out what type of changes are seen on textile first is that there is a loss of strength and elongation second is there could be discoloration and the changes in the appearance of the textile which makes the textile very uh, uh, unpleasant to see thirdly there could be some odor production and that odor is normally a musty odor so these are very unpleasant changes that can be uh, produced due to the microbial growth now control of textile biodegradation so we are all well aware of the fact that it is a very commonly used practice that whenever there is a sunlight we keep all those clothes in the sunlight why because they if, even if some moisture is present in this textile the mo moisture will get evaporated in the sunlight they are absolutely dry there is no humidity and because there is no humidity there is no microbial growth no algal growth on the fabrics and we should take care that such Uh, textiles when they are stored they should be stored in a dry condition only there should not be no uh, humidity apart from this physical method there are the use of biocides the fabrics which are to be used outdoors especially the exam, beach umbrellas military uniform sails tents which are to be used truck and boat covers 
shoe and shoe linings these should be treated with some fungicide in textile industry mainly we are making the use of organo copper compounds organic tin compounds and chlorinated phenols to control the microbial growth next is biodeterioration of paint as we all understand that the paints are basically a coating that is used to protect or to decorate a surface it is a mixture of four things it contains pigment it contains binder solvent and additives but these paints which are used to protect the wood from the growth of microorganisms are also liable or susceptible to attack by different kinds of microorganisms and if microorganism causes the deterioration of the paint what changes we can see there is a thinning of the paint even the microbial or the fungal growth can alter the color of the paint and very important is that the binding properties of the paints are affected or altered as a result of that we can see the peeling of the paint from the of a uh, wooden portion or from any other area which is painted so this is a very very dangerous effect of uh, bio deterioration of stain or paints now you just have take a glance at these two pictures the very beautiful picture is because of bio deterioration gets distorted like anything it doesn't look nice to see at the picture which is bio deteriorated so this is a horrible effect produced because of bio deterioration of paints we can have even we have the second picture which shows the peeling off of paint from the wooden surface which is not again a pleasing picture to the eyes the organism responsible for the deterioration of uh, paint includes uh cladosporium penicillium mucor rhizopus pseudomonas aeruminas and vibrio etc how can we control this kind of bio deterioration then the addition of certain microbial compounds like mercury and lead compounds are widely used to control this kind of bio deterioration other compounds which can also be used includes the chlorinated phenols barium metaborate quaternary ammonium compounds so i hope that 